Good morning, everybody. By now, if you are here in class today, you have the notes guide in front of you and something to write with. And we are sitting in the planetarium about to learn what stars are made of. Um, we call these notes stellar composition. If you are doing this from home, you will definitely need to go and get a copy of the notes guide and be ready to follow along. So uh, what are stars made of and how do we know they're light years away? Um, we're gonna learn about that today. We're gonna be doing some demonstrations and I'll be showing you some equipment and pausing these notes along the way. So here we go. Uh, the first question you might have is what is light? Uh, we study starlight when we look up in the sky. And so light is a wave, we've learned about waves already, of electric and magnetic fields, and we call it the electromagnetic radiation. So if you're looking at this diagram, you've seen this before. We did a pretty extensive activity looking at radio waves and infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma radiation. So again, stars give all of this radiation off, and the only part that we actually study when we're trying to find out what they're made of is the center section right here called visible light. So again, a little wave review. Waves are defined as ways that energy moves from one place to another. And so again, as a review, here's a picture of a wave. Um, you've got one wavelength measured from the top of one crest to the top of the next. And a trough is defined as the point below the midline. The crest is the point above the midline. So I did ask you in your notes to just make a quick sketch of a wave and draw what one wavelength represents in case you forgot. So wavelengths, when we study stars, we are looking at color. And so when we look at the wavelengths that are really short, uh, we see smaller wavelengths, the color violet. And then the longer the wavelength of light is coming from a star, it changes in order from blue to green, yellow, orange, and red. So violet is the shortest and red is the longest wavelength when we're studying the energy from stars. So that's just the visible light portion that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about x-rays, gamma radiation, radio waves, infrared, or any of that. Just this tiny little portion of the visible light spectrum. So again, here's a picture of the different types of wavelengths. You can see the shorter waves over here and the longer waves over here. And um, you can see that we've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma radiation. The visible light is kind of expanded right here. And you can see if you were on the violet end, the wavelengths would be really short. And then as they start getting longer and longer and longer, the energy is lower frequency and it turns a red color. So we talked about wave frequency, how many waves pass by a point in a given amount of time. Um, so a lot of review on waves, but that's how we study starlight. Okay, so because we're studying just the visible light portion, we're gonna dissect that a little bit. So anytime, if you look at the pictures that you see right here, you see a light bulb or you see the sun, um, you know, you're, you're looking at all of that with your eyes themselves. So uh, when we study the visible light, um, we have to note that all waves are measured in something known as a nanometer. And so a nanometer is, if you look at this analogy right here, um, if you took a tennis ball and then you compare that tennis ball uh, to planet Earth, that is one nanometer. That's how tiny it is. And so they're between four to 700 nanometers is where you would find visible light. So in other words, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So if you took a meter stick and you chopped it in pieces a billion times, one little sliver of that is a nanometer. Um, our eyes can see that though. Our eyes see wavelengths that range from four to 700 nanometers. So we call it light. So everything else on the electromagnetic spectrum is invisible. However, nanometers um, of four to 700 range are the type that we can see. So that's the starlight that we study when we're trying to figure out what they're made of. So we call light from stars spectra when you're either wearing glasses, which you're gonna see today, or prisms. You, you look at the light through a prism and what it will do is bend the path of the visible light coming from the star and refract it. So refraction means to simply bend. 
So again, if you're looking at this picture right here, imagine white light comes in right here. It shines into this prism and the prism bends and refracts it. And then we get to see all of the colors. So if we shine white light on a prism, it breaks it into the component colors and we call those component colors spectra. So it's kind of hidden by, there it goes, um, by the menu. So the component colors, all of these colors that you see are called spectra. And we're gonna be looking at all different types of spectra today. That's why I brought you down to the planetarium. All right. So we're gonna be using this device called a spectrometer. Um, and a spectrometer has a prism on one end of it. I'm actually gonna show you and pause these notes in a second. And there's a little slit on the other end. And that slit is what gathers light. And so when you gather the light, when you're looking through the spectrometer, um, you're able to see the component colors that the star is made of and study all of the things that are in it. And so you're gonna look like this picture today, right here. Um, the spectrometers range from tube size to these flat ones. And I'll show you all of the examples today in class. So remember, component colors, we're talking about the spectra. So there are three types of spectra, though. So before we actually study any of the starlight today, we need to know like what types of spectra there is. So the first type of spectra is called continuous. And a continuous spectrum looks like this. So that's not just a pretty rainbow up there just to decorate the slide. Um, it, it is all blended together. You guys can see it goes from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, and then violet, all blended together. So any solid, any liquid or dense gas will emit light of all of the wavelengths without any gaps. So we would call it continuous. So again, if you're looking at the light being gathered through a tiny little slit, it goes through a prism. If the light being gathered is a solid liquid or gas that's really dense and emitting all of it, we would see it as a continuous rainbow, all blended together just like that. So that's why they call it a continuous spectrum. So today I'm gonna to show you some examples of light that give off a continuous spectrum. So when I say, you know, what type of spectrum is this today, you should be looking for, does it all blend together? Because if it does, it's called continuous. The second type of spectrum is bright line or emission. So emission is the official name, bright line spectra is the nickname. So now before you write down anything, I want you to look very carefully at this picture and notice how the rainbow looks quite different than the continuous. You can still see all the colors, but notice that it's it, there's these bright lines that are kind of brighter than the background color, and that's the spectra we're talking about. So this type of spectra is produced by a very thin gas that will emit only a few wavelengths of energy, and we call it emission or bright line. So if we isolated the gases, which we've done in labs before, for instance, if we took a tube of hydrogen and we excited it with energy, all right, it would start giving off light. And when we gather that light through the slit and then it goes through the prism and it bends it, we only end up seeing certain actual colors that come through. So we call that the bright line spectra. Now, the cool thing about the devices that we use to measure and gather starlight is that they have little tiny um, scales inside of them that show how many nanometers, like what the nanometers are. So, you know, if you're looking down at the 400 nanometer, that you're looking at violet light. And then if you're looking down at the 700 and you're looking at the red light. Um, and so you can actually measure which element because wherever the bright line is showing up, they have characteristic barcodes. So those barcodes, just like if you went to the grocery store and you were scanning apples, the machine would know based on the code that those are apples or then a gallon of milk. Um, so these spectra, these bright line spectra, each element on the periodic table has a specific barcode or bright line spectra. And then if it's present in the star, you can actually tell from Earth as long as you can gather the light. So that is the bright line. And then finally, the third type of spectra is called dark line or absorption. So if you look at the picture before you write any of the notes for a minute, notice it almost at first glance looks like a continuous spectrum, but it's not. You see all these tiny little black lines? That's why they call it absorption spectra. Um, notice it also looks like a barcode, and that's going to be really, really important to understand in a moment. So what is the dark line or absorption spectra? It's when bands of color get crossed by the dark lines where the color gets diminished. So 
that's why they call it dark line spectra. And how does this happen? It's a little complicated, but different elements absorb light at a specific wavelength. And so each element that's present inside of the spectra that you see would be absorbed at a different band of dark, you know, a dark line. And so what happens is if a star is giving off light, right? You got to imagine stars are huge. We talked about the sun and how we could fit 110 Earths across the diameter of the sun. So the inside of the star is really hot and it's hotter than the outside of the star. So as those outer layers of the star, they absorb some of the light because it's cooler out there. The different elements that are present are going to be absorbed at different wavelengths and the dark line pattern will appear. The cool thing about the dark line is it's the opposite of the bright line. It's almost like if you had hydrogen and hydrogen was present in this picture right here, and you had the bright line spectra of hydrogen by itself, and then you compared them, they would fit together like a puzzle. So the bright lines would actually go where all the dark lines are. So different elements absorb different wavelengths, and those dark lines are the same pattern as the bright line spectra when you look at the individual elements. So that's how we can do that on Earth. We can get this dark line absorption spectra for a star, and then we can take the bright line spectra of the elements that we can create on Earth, and then we can compare it and fit it together and find out what elements are in the stars. So this is the most important spectra when you are um, studying starlight, because the next thing I'd like you to write down is that all stars have absorption spectra. You have a box on your notes, and I want you to put this statement in that box right now. All stars have absorption spectra. Um, here's a picture again. Here's the star, and you can see that the inside is really hot and the outside is really cool, and it starts giving off visible light. And the visible light, it says right here, the atoms in the cooler atmosphere get excited, absorbing the photons of energy. And then these transitions appear as little dark lines. So you can see the dark lines get crossed right here. Um, as it travels through this section. And then when you're looking on Earth, you can see, you know, what that looks like and compare it to the bright line spectres we've created. So seems confusing, but in a moment, I'm going to show you all of this. And so hopefully you're like, oh, way easier. So we're going to do some demonstrations. Okay. What is the most common element in stars after all of this analysis on the light? The most common element is hydrogen. So the chemical abbreviation on the periodic table is the letter H. Then the second most abundant element in stars is helium, which is abbreviated HE. And then there are small traces of other gases in stars like carbon and neon and nitrogen and iron and so forth. So here's a pie chart just showing you most stars look like this. All right, like hydrogen is the biggest, then helium. And then a tiny, tiny little sliver is other. And if you zoom in on other, you can see these are some of the other elements that make up stars. All right. So hydrogen and helium, most stars contain. Now, what else can we learn about stars by studying the light that they emit? We can learn about their color and their temperature. So the color of a star tells what temperature it is. In other words, if you look at the thermometer on this picture right here, you can see that if you're in the violet end right here, it says 10 billion degrees Kelvin. If you look on the red end over here, it says one degree Kelvin. So, or what, yeah, one degree Kelvin. So, and I'm only talking about the visible light portion. So when we are looking at the visible light, stars that are a violet color or blue stars, they're really hot. And stars that are orange or red are really cool. When I say really cool though, obviously they're much hotter than anything we can imagine um, because it says Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273. Yeah, so 273 degrees, that's not cool but it's much cooler than what you see over here at 10 billion degrees Kelvin. So blue stars are hot, so jot that down. Red stars are cool. It's the complete opposite of what you know in your everyday life, so it is kind of confusing. When you were a little kid, they would tell you, oh, that's hot, that's red, don't touch it. <laughs> now in this case, it's the opposite. Blue stars are the hot ones and red stars are the cool ones. Okay, so this is the bright line spectra of hydrogen right here. And this is the bright line spectra of helium. And what I was saying earlier is where those, those energies, uh, those atoms get excited and they give off those wavelengths, um, it, they fall between four and 700 nanometers. So this is the barcode for hydrogen. And down here, this is the barcode for helium. Notice they look totally different. 
So if the star has hydrogen in it and you see that bright line fit into the dark line spectra, then it, it has hydrogen in it. Same thing with helium. If the star has helium and then you take the helium and you lay it over the dark line spectra and the helium fits there, it also has helium. So that's how we can tell what stars have, even though they're light years away. So look at this picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. You can see out, out in the sky, stars are many, many different colors. Those blue stars that you're looking at are really hot. Those red stars and orange stars are really cool. Obviously, um, the white and yellow stars are in the middle, and they're going to be average temperature like our sun. There's another picture just showing the range of stars out there in space. And another beautiful picture, if you could zoom in on the night sky, that's what it would look like. So quiz time, what is letter A? Is it continuous, dark line, or bright line? We're gonna do this together right now. What is letter B? Is it continuous, bright line, or dark line? And what is letter C? Is it continuous, bright line, or dark line? So I'll give you a second to ponder that. All right, so letter A is continuous, letter B is dark line or absorption, and letter C is bright line or emission. So hopefully you got them right. And now that you're an expert at the different types of spectra, we are going to look at it right now. So I've numbered out the rainbow glasses, so we're not sharing from class to class. I had enough to go through, um, so you each have your own pair. You'll still turn them in and I will sanitize them for the next day. Um, but we won't have to share them at all. So we're going to be putting those on. If you wear eyeglasses, keep your glasses on and then put these over. And we're going to be looking at a bunch of demonstrations right now so that we can see what I've been talking about in these notes today.